Hello my art loving friends! In today's video we will be checking out this Paul Rubens 24 set. In addition to that we're going to be trying a painting on this Art & Fly 100% cotton paper. Should be a good time. So I actually purchased this Paul Rubens set back in June of last year and the reason I did that is because I had a 12 set which you guys have seen on this channel before if you've been around for a while and I decided to give that to my daughter-in-law because the only paint set she had was the Spiererfarben one and there have been some interesting things going on with that set so I'll link a couple of those videos either up in the corner for you or down in the description box below or maybe both. Long story short, Spiererfarben are not light fast at all and Paul Rubens are. So we sat down to add to her Spirit Farben set and try and get her some light fast paints and then I decided it would just be way easier to give her the Paul Rubens set that I had. So I replaced my 12 set with this 24 set. That's why I have it. It's been in my drawer waiting to be looked at for a long time. And then you guys saw the Art and Fly paper in the Christmas or pre-Christmas haul, maybe like Black Friday haul, I don't remember, but it's been sitting on my desk for over a month waiting to be used. Here are these wonderful paints. It comes in a very sturdy box, which hopefully I can reuse for something else. Packaging is just quite nice. Fun little bag. This will go in my birthday supplies. I can wrap someone's present with it. And then I wanted this very pretty emerald box on purpose. So it, it is full metal, has the flaps, and inside are the beautiful 24 half pans. And because I am doing this massive watercolor project where I am swatching all of my colors and putting them in color order into a big library, I'm going to go ahead and swatch these on this project paper, which is Arches 140 pound 100% cotton paper. However, for the purpose of this video, I will show those swatches to you, but I'm going to speed them up. Look, nice flat bottom on this one. And I love how they put their metal things quite far apart because it gives you room for more than one brush, or you could even do a pencil and a fine liner or water brush or whatever you want in there. So I, that's really smart when you have tens to put the paint far away in my opinion. I do like that feature. All right, let's see what these colors look like. And then we're gonna do a fun little winter painting that's actually part of the snow art challenge that Dina Tollefson is hosting for today, actually. So if you do the hashtag snow art challenge, you should be able to see everyone's videos that are available that have participated in the snow art challenge. And the snow art challenge is just where you have to paint something that has to do with snow. And it should be super fun to see what everyone is painting. Real quick, I will unwrap one of these for you. I was gonna see if these are stuck to the sides because sometimes you can just peel off like the top and the sides will stay on. That's what I was hoping for, but it doesn't look like that's necessarily going to happen this time. Kind of a lot of work. Hi, Chica's helping me. <laughs> see, yeah, it comes off the bottom really easily. I wonder now if we could just take, I don't know if it's sticky. Yeah, it's not sticky enough on the sides to keep that, darn it. That would be so much easier just to leave that on. I could double side tape it, but I think I'll do my usual and use a Sharpie and put it on there with a Sharpie. Darn, distraction over, let's move on. So I do show you the pigment information and light fast and transparency ratings all later. So let's talk about the colors instead of me going through all of that. You can see that white is very opaque actually. It's quite nice, at least so far. And in my opinion, this set has two yellows a little cooler and a little warmer yellow. You can't see the differences in this swatch till it dries. And then two oranges if you consider Indian yellow an orange. And for my purposes, I am. And that weird one that I just swatched is their Naples yellow. We'll talk more about that later. But the actual orange orange is very pretty. And then there's that one red there. And then there's two pinks. And I miss my camera turned off and I missed the one. So my only complaint would be that these two pinks or roses or whatever you want to call them are too close in hue. They look very, very much the same actually. And the purple, I had to go look up pigments and be sure because it acted a lot like a cobalt violet. Hard to re-wet, no pigment load, very, very strange purple. And when I re-swatched it on my little one that goes in my palette, I thought the same thing. It was like, oh boy, that is not gonna work. So we have four blues if you count indigo as a blue, and they're all very different, which is great. The indigo is a little too black for me. I like a little bluer indigo, but it works. Four greens, and they're all very different, so that's awesome as well. And then there are basically four browns, because I'm considering yellow ochre one of the browns. 
and the sepia as one of the browns because it's very brown tinted so it's awesome plus it has a Payne's gray and a black so this color set is really well-rounded except for the purple I really need a stronger purple in this set so I'm kind of bummed about that but luckily we have enough blues and reds and roses or whatever they are that we can make a pretty good purple just it's kind of a bummer it's not better this is what they look like all dry and this is in the order they came in the set I will be rearranging this order because it's not an order that I'm used to. A couple things for me are out of place and I'll just be switching those around and I'll show you that in a minute. They are quite pretty. The one big surprise for me is this Naples yellow. I'm not sure what's up with that. That does not seem like a Naples yellow that I'm used to, which is very interesting. Well, as usual, what happens with palettes where you have to fit a certain number of pans in a certain amount of space, there is no perfect solution to your color order. So this is what I'm happy with at the moment, and it's these two and these four that I'm not sure I'm happy with the order. It really doesn't matter you get used to your palette in whichever order it eventually is, especially when you have your swatch sheet within the palette, but this one was a little bit tricky. I was just about to take the packaging off of this off camera, but I did want to point out, since this is part of a review on this paper as well, that the corners are packaged with cardboard, so you will have a good chance of it coming with the corners not being damaged, which is a nice feature. So let's go ahead and get the packaging off and see what the paper itself looks like. So as of today, the day this video is coming out, the paper on Amazon is $18.78 and it's 15 sheets. This is the 9 by 12, 300 GSM. And it is glue bound on two sides. The top, apparently, because this doesn't even come, oh yeah, there I was gonna say, it doesn't even come off the top. So even behind this paper binding, it is glued. So this side is open and this side is open and the bottom is also glue bound. As far as the feel, it is not soft. Uh, I don't know if you know what I mean exactly, but Arches paper has, here's Arches paper. So Arches paper, when you feel it and the cat hair, it. I don't know, it feels soft, it catches your skin. This is smooth, more like cellulose, which this is not cellulose paper, it's cotton, so I'm very curious to paint on it and see what it's like. It does have a texture, it's pretty organic texture, so not really a machine texture at all, which is great. Okay, let's do our painting. So hopefully you can see this. This is a picture that my brother took out snowmobiling and we go to this area a lot in the winter and in the summer on our dirt bikes and sometimes our razors to our UTVs. I don't mind how dirty the camera screen is. I have to take the cover off and clean underneath it. That's where all the dirt is, of course, between the screen and the cover. Anyway, it's a beautiful picture. Real quick before we begin, all these kind of tins have the fold out flap over here. I thought I would leave this one on, but when I went to put it beside my paper just now, it did feel too big for me. So I'm going to do my usual thing and grab my needle nose pliers that also have cat hair on them and just try and pull this pin out. Oh, that was easy. Perfect. And then that will just come off. And now the tin is much more manageable. And I think these four mixing wells are going to be plenty because if I need more mixing space, I have all of that in the middle. So I can use that instead of this flap and just fits on my counter better, my tables, wherever I'm painting, it fits better. And I'm going to use Lindsay's brushes again, but you guys, I noticed sad things. So I pulled this one out to do the swatch sheet for this palette, which I have drying under something here because I squished it so it would dry flat. Oh, more cat hair. So anyway, I pulled it out to do the swatch sheet, but the ferrule is so loose that I was having some, I don't know, comfort issues. It was bugging me that it was wiggling. So I'm like, well, interesting. I wonder if the others are loose. Yes, this one is really loose. This is the only one and the big flat that is not loose in my set. Although there is this tiny one, which I haven't tried. Tiny one is tight. Half of the brushes have really loose ferrules. So yeah, they're all wiggly. I don't even know. Can you see that moving? Which is interesting because I used these two last time and I don't remember noticing that, but this time I'm like, ah, I can't handle it, <laughs> which is such a bummer. Regardless, I'm going to use them anyway. I did 
contact Craftimo just to let them know, but I imagine what I'll do, I mean, I have the needle nose right here. They're not, that's not the right tool. I need actual pliers, but I'll go get pliers. And if I can, I'll just squish these tighter and then they'll stop wiggling. So it's an easy fix. It just, I thought they should know about it. So I emailed them. Yeah, this one's really bad. So I'll just squish them tight and use them because they were really enjoyable. They seem to have really nice bristles. And we're just jumping right into the painting process here and I'm starting by wetting the entire piece of paper and I was curious how the water would act because this felt so smooth that I was afraid the water would just sit on the surface, but it didn't. It soaked right in just like regular cotton paper, like the arches in the Baohong that I'm used to and the Hanamule, well the Hanamule is kind of its own little thing with, <laughs> we'll talk about that some other time, but anyway, it worked just like cotton paper. So that was great. Obviously it says it's cotton, it just, oh, I don't know. It felt so smooth. I was definitely curious how that would turn out, but it was all good. So you can see me using the white there and it shows up pretty good at first and then it kind of dries and disappears a bit. Anyway, I was feeling kind of awful all week. <laughs> really, really awful. Didn't actually feel like doing this painting, but I've never missed one of Dina Tollefson's challenges before at least since I have known about them. So I just made myself sit down and do this and I was curious to test the paint again. It's been a long time since I've used Paul Rubens and definitely curious to test the paper. But I guess I'm giving you that caveat because this is not my best work. I was not in the painting creative mood. However, it was nice to use the brushes again, even though they're wobbly, <laughs> to try and put a painting together and to use new paper. That's always exciting, right? And the paper is fine. I hate to say this, but I can't really tell with just one painting how it is. So I talk more about that kind of at the end. So you'll hear more about the paper a little bit later. But yeah, this painting, uh, I would like to do it again and do it some justice because it's okay. I actually love the sky. Having the two different blue tones in the sky worked really well and I think the cloudy part looks great, but there's some things I would like to change. I didn't even realize it until I came back into my studio later. I had the painting still uh, open on the table and I'm like, oh my goodness, the shadow and the snow on the right side, you, you don't see it yet because it's pretty light still, but I darken it way too much. Ugh. I'm gonna have to see if I can lift some of that shadow out and I will before I put this painting away right there where I'm working. Right now it looks fine, but I darken it later way too much. So I'm going to lift it up, make it lighter like you're kind of seeing now. And then I do put this yellow tint on the snow and I really like that it warms it up and I like it. So there are things about the painting that I like, just not, I don't know. It just, it hasn't been my week, you guys. <laughs> That's all I'll say for now, I guess. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna give you some music, but I'll be back with you probably in less than a minute. It is not fully dry yet, but I think I'm gonna call it good. So you can see how opaque or not opaque, whichever way you wanna put it, the white is. That's pretty nice for just a watercolor white. So you can use it as a cover up and that's kind of what I was suspecting when I put it on my swatch sheet here. I put it over the black and I even used salt to pull some up or the salt pulled some up. And I was like, wow, that's a really opaque white. So I like that. I think that's a great addition to this. Uh, you can see though the white that I put in on the mountains, it just keeps disappearing. So 
think it is a little dependent on what color is behind. The white shows up in this painting where it needs to, so there you have it. Probably should have taped the edge because I did get some blue on the page below it. And same, same over here. So that's one disadvantage about a block that's only glued on two edges is the other two edges can still get to the papers beneath it. Now even with the arches block where it's exposed to the other papers up here, I do get paint on those papers below that in that case as well. So it is something that I usually have a piece of tape over. I keep finding things. Anyway, not a painting I'm fully happy with here, but I can't really tell you about the paper a whole lot except nothing bugged me with it. So I would need to do a lot more painting on it and maybe I'll paint on this and arches and bao hong and maybe I'll pull out that Gen Crafts 100% cotton paper that I have to test still and maybe do side by side test of all of them just to get that feel for it. I've already told you a little bit about the paper as I was going along through the process. Just look for that upcoming video. If you aren't subscribed and you wanna be notified when that comes out, you just have to hit the subscribe button and the little bell. If you feel that bell all the way in and it'll say like all notifications, then it'll show you every time I release a video and then you can pick and choose which ones you wanna watch from there. And it uh, doesn't really bug you other than telling you that a video has been released that you might be interested in. All right, guys, check out the other videos in the Snow Art Challenge playlist. Again, it's not a painting that I'm fully happy with, but considering the week I've had and other stuff, um, it's going to have to be good enough for now. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining me. Very fun set. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Anyway, it's a beautiful painting. Beautiful painting.